When I turn on the news or listen to political commentary, it doesn't seem like there's much love in the world. In fact, it seems like there's a plethora of anger, cruelty, and fear. Years, years ago, I read a book called Love is Letting Go of Fear by Dr. Gerald Jampolsky. And his hypothesis was that there are only two emotions, love and fear, and that all negative emotions boil down to fear, greed, anger, jealousy, et cetera, et cetera. And he also wrote that, yes, we can feel love for someone and affection, but true love is shown through action, walking one's talk. This is why I love church. You walk your talk. You are love in action. The list is long and varied of all the little ministries that are going on in this church, and it greatly inspires me. It also reminds me that there's more to the world than the astonishingly cruel acts that we see played out on our eyes every day on television. The stories just this past week could fill one with despair. However, there are little cells and pockets of people taking loving actions in the world. I love the concept of the web of life, that every single thing and every, every being is connected. When people feel isolated or who are isolated, their darkest emotions are given a place to fester. I realize that the only responsibility that I cannot evade in this life is the one I probably think of the least, my personal influence. Every single one of us has an atmosphere which is affecting other people. So silently and invisibly does it work that we may forget that it exists. Into our hands is given a marvelous power. The constant radiation of what we project to other people. And so my prayer is to cultivate calm and trust, generosity and justice, loyalty and honesty, and above all, love and an open heart. And as usual for me, music is the conduit to communicate to you what I value and what I think and how I love. Bobby McFerrin said, all music is a prayer. And David Rico in his book, How to Be an Adult said, wrote, the more we advance on our spiritual path, the more we appreciate that everything good, everything beautiful, and everything life affirming, even pain, is actually love. We can enjoy the beauty of Mozart's music, and then one day we realize that the beauty is only a felicitous trick that he uses to bear us away to a realm where we feel loved. We discover the gift dimension of the music and feel it in our bodies. We find out why it has lasted through the ages. It shows love and helps us receive it. Then we know that music is what love sounds like, and art and drama and dance are what love looks like. And when something still has the power to move us, it must have been love all along, since love moves the earth and the other stars. When I started practicing astrology, I was puzzled why the horoscopes of artistic people so often show the sun, the moon, Mercury, and other planets in the third house of communication instead of the fifth house of creativity. 
It's so easy to think of creativity as an insular thing, something we do to please ourselves. But ultimately, acts of creation are acts of communicating love. And so, when I sing, every song is a prayer and a desire to reach out with love. So today, what we're gonna be talking about is the new proposed Article 2. Who knows what Article 2 is? It's kinda what I figured, okay. Which is why we're talking about it. So Article 2 is the part of the Unitarian Universalist Association bylaws that has are seven principles in it. It has what exactly it is that the UUA is and what the goals are and, and what we are supposed to be doing and um, you know why it is that we have this association of congregations and Unitarian Universalists. Um, and so we are a faith that moves. We are not a faith that believes that the only truth comes from a book that was written 2,000 years ago. We think that things move more than that and ideas change and we believe in scientific facts and those change awfully quick sometimes. And so we like to, we like to to not just say that, you know, what we wrote 60 years ago is the only way that it could possibly be. And so every 15 years, we are supposed to look at that Article 2. And it actually hasn't been rewritten in 38 years, substantively. Um, so what we're going to do today, through the magic of PowerPoint and other people's slides, because I'm crap at PowerPoint. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at like what were the principles like when the Unitarian Universalist Association was formed in 1961? Where did they go from there? And what is the proposal and, and how is it the same or different from the seven principles? Why are we doing this anyway? Um, because what's going to happen is at General Assembly, which is the yearly gathering of Unitarian Universalists from all over the country and the world, um, we are going to vote on whether we like that enough to study it for a year and think maybe that's, maybe that's where we're, we're looking at going. Um, and then in another year, they'll vote on it again and see if that that looks like the next articulation of our faith. Um, and so this is a reading from the Article II Commission that was assigned and charged and had meetings with more than 4,000 people in various groups and got surveys back from more than 10,000 people. So they really did a lot of due diligence in trying to find out what is the center of our faith. What values do we as Unitarian Universalists hold in common? What's important to us? And how do we articulate that? And so um, this is something that they wrote. They wrote, they said, the seven principles express a shared ethic and imply a certain theology, one that values the individual, growth, the natural world, and diversity. But is it? does not name these values explicitly, nor does it name any other values important to us collectively. It also gives no guidance on how we might approach living out these values in our congregations and our world. It declares itself to be a covenant, but the only actions it asks of congregations are to affirm and promote certain concepts. We believe we should expect more from a covenant. As one member put it, we need more verbs. <laughs> For some, the current principles also serve as a theological statement, a personal code of ethics, and a way to evangelize by explaining who we are. For all these reasons, we believe that we would be better served by a structure 
in which we articulate our shared values and then use these values as the ground for aspirational statements of action. Throughout this process, we have been guided by the idea of the living tradition. As James Luther Adams has said, a living tradition is not bequeathed through some law of inheritance. It must be earned, not without dust and heat, and not without humbling grace. Throughout the dust and heat, we have been humbled by the grace extended to us and by all those who participated in our process. In our work, we sought to honor the ancestors who came before and envision all of us Unitarian Universalists as good ancestors to those who follow us in the future. We hope this revision nurtures that living tradition so it continues to flourish and look forward to that future time when another commission takes up this work to make it speak for their age. Okay. Yay. <laughs> So the first thing that the commission did was listen to a bunch of Unitarian Universalists articulate what our values were. And the thing that came through loudest and clearest is that we believe that Unitarian Universalism is centered in love. Um, if we we as a denomination sometimes struggle with theological language. Some of us like the word God, some of us really don't like the word God, but we can kind of all agree on love. And, um, and so what the board of trustees said to the commission was we would like something that is centered on this idea of love that that feels like the most, the juiciest, most powerful thing that we can all agree on is that idea of love, transformative love. Um, in 1960, I don't know that that is where the Universalists and the Unitarians really focused on. So in 1960, what happened was two separate denominations um, the Universalists, who believed that no one was going to hell because God was too good to damn anyone to hell. And the Unitarians, who believed that Jesus didn't claim to be divine, that there wasn't a trinity, but there was just one God, and Jesus was a prophet and a teacher, um, and, and an example for people to follow, but not divine in and of himself. Um, and those two denominations realized that they had a lot more in common, than they had differences. They were both sort of fading as denominations and decided that they should merge. Um, their youth groups had merged like eight years ago because the youth always lead the way. And, um, and so those two groups came together and tried to figure out what can we hold in common? What, what is our statement of faith and values? Um, and so that was a complicated thing, primarily because the Universalists were more Christian than the Unitarians were at that point in time. And they literally stayed up all night debating our Judeo-Christian heritage and finally ended up with a separate statement of sources that talked about the Judeo-Christian heritage because sometimes Unitarian Universalists like to argue. Um, and so what they came up with at that point in time was, um, was what you see on this thing ahead of you. In accordance with these corporate purposes, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Association dedicated to the principles of a free faith unite in seeking to strengthen one another in a free and disciplined search for truth as the foundation of our religious fellowship to cherish and spread the universal truths taught by the great prophets and teachers of humanity in every age and tradition immemorially bleh, summarized in the Judeo-Christian heritage as love to God and love to man. 
to defend, affirm, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality, the dignity of man, and the use of the democratic method in human relationships, to implement our vision of one world by striving for a world community founded on ideals of brotherhood, justice, and peace, to serve the needs of member congregation churches and fellowships, to organize new churches and fellowships, and to extend and strengthen liberal religion, and to encourage cooperation with men of goodwill in every land. In 1985, what can you see that people might have taken issue with in those, in those statements? Men, 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 men. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, anything else that you see? Judeo-Christian. Mm -hmm. um, it also, they're also in, in, in the 1960s version um, is a very strong emphasis on individual beliefs and behaviors. Um, there's not a lot of in, interdependence in the 1960s version. And so what happened was um, a group beginning as a group of women in the early 80s said, um, said you know, we, we think we can do better here. Um, and so they, um, the, Univ the UUA agreed that yes, it was time to reconsider these. Um, they formed a commission. They um, wrote it as, um, as a group, but not as a giant group of thousands because word crafting by committee is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, and so they came up with this version in 1985. And this was where they pulled out the Judeo-Christian heritage and put it in with a bunch of other sources. And so these are the seven principles. Um, it started out with six. The seventh was added, um, was added in the whole group. Um, Cause they said, you know, there's nothing in here about the natural world or the environment. And so the, the seventh principle was added once this had actually been taken back to the whole General Assembly. Um, and, and it's beautiful and it's not, there's, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is not, um, it is not dated in the same way that the 1960s version was dated. Um, and yet, there are some things missing from here. One of the biggest things that was missing was um, some way of addressing racism and oppression. Um, and so the eighth principle was proposed, um, was actually written in about 2013. Um, in 2020, uh, congregations started adopting it um, in, as individual congregations. Um, I think that this would come again before the entire General Assembly if for some reason we don't um, choose to move forward with the recommendations of Article 2 and study that for a year, I think. Um, and we may look at our congregation adopting this at our annual meeting in May. So we'll see about that. Um, and so in 2023, um, this is the new proposal. Um, as Unitarian Universalists, we covenant congregation to congregation and throughout our association to support and assist one another in our ministries. We draw from our heritages of freedom, reason, hope, and courage, building on the foundation of love. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Inseparable from one another, these shared values are, and this is the kind of graphic that they've got, kind of looks like my pinwheels, doesn't it? <laughs> Interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence. So something that I kind of want you to do here is if you know the seven principles pretty well, 
notice where you see words that are in or phrases that are in the seven principles in these descriptions of the values. We honor the interdependent web of all existence. We covenant to cherish earth and all beings by creating and nurturing relationships of care and respect. With humility and reverence, we acknowledge our place in the great web of life and we work to repair harm and damaged relationships. Pluralism. We celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. Justice. We work to be in diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions. Transformation. We adapt to the changing world. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages, never complete and never perfect. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. Equity. We declare that each person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. So did you hear some words from our principles in there, in some phrases? So this, um, so the first slides that I used were from Reverend Elizabeth Carrier Ladd. And the second set of principles that are, the second set of slides that I am using are from um, Cynthia Landrum, Reverend Cynthia Landrum. Um, and Cynthia Landrum, um, actually put each of these in different colors going with the word that they went with. Um, the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion, acceptance of one another, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, right of conscience, use of the democratic process, justice, respect for the interdependent web of all existence, diverse, multicultural, beloved community, and dismantle racism and other oppressions. And so they really worked to um, use the language of the principles in the way they described these words. And then the proposed purposes of the Unitarian Universalist Association is very similar to what it was before, but they added a little bit, and I'm gonna read you the proposed one. It says, the Unitarian Universalist Association will devote its resources to and use its organizational powers for religious, educational, and humanitarian purposes. Its primary purposes are to assist congregations in their vital ministries, support and train leaders, both lay and professional, to foster lifelong faith formation, to heal in historic injustices, and to advance our Unitarian Universalist values in the world. The purpose of the Unitarian Universalist Association is to actively engage its members in the transformation of the world through liberating love. How many of you have heard about the concept of elevator speeches? Okay. Nobody knows what Article 2 speech is. Everyone knows what, what elevator speeches are. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Um, 
but yes, elevator speeches are, um, I heard it from Bill Sinkford first, um, who was the president of the UUA and then was the minister at First Unitarian Church of Portland. And um, I don't know, I believe it may be his concept originally, but Bill Sinkford said, okay, you are at General Assembly and you get onto the elevator with your Unitarian Universalist t-shirt and somebody looks at you, you are on the seventh floor and somebody looks at you and says, so what's a Unitarian Universalist? And you do not have time to go through the seven principles in those seven floors. And so what is your succinct one paragraph statement about what is a Unitarian Universalist? Mine is, um, Unitarian Universalists are a liberal religious faith we believe in something greater than ourselves, but what that is varies widely. For some folks, it's science or God or the power of gathered humanity. But we believe that there's something greater than ourselves out there. And we believe that our job is to make this world a better place in the here and now because we don't know what happens afterwards. So the purpose of the Unitarian Universalist Association is to actively engage its members in the transformation of the world through liberating love. That is much shorter than mine was, but it really says something kind of similar. Um, and I kind of love it. Um, this congregation, this UUCWF, which before was Atkinson Memorial Church, which before was the Oregon City Congregational Church, which before that was um, actually for a hot minute, the Presbyterian Church of Oregon City, um, was founded in 1844 as a free church. And what a free church is, is a church that doesn't require a creedal test of its members and a church that gets to choose their own ministers. That has been very important to this congregation throughout our entire history as a congregational church. And this church is the only non-Unitarian or Universalist congregation that joined the UUA at the time of merger in 1961. So we've been part of the UUA since the very beginning. Um, and we're duly affiliated and then dropped the congregational affiliation in the very early 2000s. Um, but we have always believed, these are the words of Elizabeth Carrier Ladd, um, our faith does not share a creed or a statement of belief that we require people to affirm in order to be welcome. In fact, this part of history is deeply rooted, much more deeply rooted than any of our attempts to name what binds us together. Um, and it is one of the big reasons that many people claim they have come to join us. And so relatedly, we believe that our beliefs transform over time. We don't think that God spoke to one group of people two or 3,000 years ago and then stopped. We think that revelation is not sealed we think that we all have a piece of the truth. And um, James Luther Adams said, revolution is continuous. And so that is what we believe. Um, and so it's essential for us to work together to name what binds us together. Um, I like this thing that they have come up with. I can support that. If anyone is interested in voting on this and you wanna go to General Assembly as a virtual attendee come talk to me afterwards and you can do that they have free registration if all you're going to do is go to the business meetings so if you're interested in that and hearing the conversation about this i encourage you to come talk to me after the service and we can make that happen um, i'm going to close really quickly with um, a poem called let the center hold by my friend the reverend joe cherry he writes this is my prayer Please let the center hold. The center is what holds our faith together. The strength of the center is what allows us to stretch farther into the future, to the unknown, the untried, the uncertain, the unnerving, the places where growth happens. Let the center be strong and let the center of this living tradition move with the times. Let the center of our living tradition lead the times. May the strength of the center strengthen us as we seek, as we embody compassion, work for equity, 
demand justice for all, let our center hold, strong as an old oak tree, flexible as the willow tree, life-giving as an orange tree, evergreen as the pine, and as beautiful as the almond tree in blossom. May it be so. Blessed be. And amen.